We're here today on a day session on Stanwick Lakes. Uh, it's the middle of February, we're during the lockdown period. Um, it's actually the first time I've fished since New Year's. Um, the main reason being with the local rules with, with travelling restrictions, all the local lakes close to me have been flooded for quite some time now. Um, this, this set of lakes itself has first time it's open since before Christmas. And if they haven't been flooded, they've been frozen over. Um, I'm not look, lucky with where I live. I haven't got a lot of day ticket waters close to me. Um, this is the only one really that's within a close distance to me. So, so I've had to wait. I've not fished at all for about six weeks, which is about the longest I've not fished for for about five years. So I've been really chomping at the bit. It's reopened up today. Um, two of the lakes on the complex I have anyway. And um, I've, come, I've decided to come down here on Elston's today to give it a go. Um, possibly move over to the other lake this afternoon or if I see anything I'm keeping an eye on both lakes as we do but uh, yeah you're going to see if I can win a, uh, a day ticket carp for the, on a day session. Uh, we got on the gates for half past six this morning. The, the fishery didn't open until seven, but wanted to make sure we were the first ones here. Uh, only one other person turned up right for, for opening time and one other since. So a bit, bit quieter than I thought it might be considering it's been shut for two months. But um, we've got down here. We've decided to opt for the causeway bank in between the two lakes that we fish. Um, there's this point area swim that I'm in on Elson's now, which offers, a, a large amount of water and with no other anglers around me I can cast further as well um, into other swims opposite uh, and around to the left so I've got main control of the main bulk of water on here also straight behind me I've got a mallard lake and I've got a swim right on the end there where I can look all the way up mallard lake so I can keep a good eye on both lakes see if I can find something um, been, been watching hard this morning the only thing I've seen is a bit of fizzing patches and a few sort of um, flap spots coming up here and there. I've started off on zigs because it, the, the lake's not seen any bait for a couple of months. It's mid-February. I think they're going to be up in the water. The only problem is, is that the water's very murky because of the flooding that we've had. But I've, I've gone in with um, really flavoured zigs that have been flavoured for about two years. So they really are stinky. Um, my last session I did was on Bayswater at New, Year, New Year's, and that's quite a murky water. And, and after three nights, that was what worked for me in the end, after trying maggots and everything else. I brought maggots with me today, um, and I may well swap to them either on here or on, on Mallard, the lake next door, if, if, if needs be, maybe little solid bags or little mesh bags. Um, just sort of trying to see what presents itself during the day, see if I see, see anything show. All right, this rod's been out there for about an hour now. Um, we're going to give it another rechuck. I'm actually going to, this one's on a four foot, the other one's on a three, so I'm going to swap them over um, and move them slightly. Key to zig fishing to keep, keep moving them every hour or so. Um, it, it lets you know where they are. If you're seeing them, obviously, you just want to keep altering your depth, your colours, till you get a bite. Um, quite often, you know, zig bites come within 10 minutes of recasting, so don't be scared to be rechucking them every hour all day long. Um, you know, I've had many a bites doing that all day long for 10 hours and then get it in the right place, right height, and uh, have a bite very quickly. And yeah, quickly followed by two or three other bites. 
So yeah, don't be scared to cast them around at all. Don't know whether you can quite see it on here, but look at the, the amount of natural that's still in here, the shrimps and things. You know, no wonder carp love this stuff. Love weedy waters, always fish, love fishing weedy waters. Don't ever be scared of fishing in weed. I mean, the amount of crawly stuff, this is what they want. Look at it, all the bits and bobs in here. Shrimp and everything, lovely. Um, another thing that's worth mentioning about the zigs, if you know the water a bit, or if you know there's a bit of weed beds about, if it's not just all weed everywhere, if there's certain little beds, fishing straight in the middle of those beds could be a good idea. Um, you know, so you're clipping right up, so you're actually sitting your, your zig just above, like basically dying weed or, or, or low weed. I've got caught a lot of fish doing that. Um, the only thing is sometimes you do have to obviously mark it up or let about to find that weed, which can obviously, you know, disturb fish or spook fish whilst uh, whilst you're doing that. But if you know the weed beds are there, or if you marked them up from where they were the previous year, so I'll do if I know weed beds come up to the surface, big prominent ones in the summer, I'll take photos on my phone. And then when you come back to that swim in the, in the uh, early spring, you know where the weed beds were, roughly. Gives you a bit of an edge. Yeah, just something to look out for. Um, the other thing I've done with just one of the rods, I put five or six maggots on and uh, ju just uh, put them onto a bit of thread and uh, with a needle and just put that onto the top of the zigger liner. Um, just for something a bit different. Um, I've never really fished this lake in the winter, but I did pop and see my mate down here about five years ago and he had a fish while I was here and he was fishing maggots on the top, so I kept that in mind. No, it works on here, something worth keeping an eye on. It, it works everywhere, anything like that, something a bit different. So now, because I've swapped this over with the other rod, it gives me a chance of having that over there and a bit of different colour foam there, different depths, different, different positions. So again, keep just working the swim, working the areas, working the depths, see if we can uh, pick up a bite from somewhere. Um, just redoing the rods and uh, just spotted a bit of a flat spot come up again. So I'm going to reel in the right rod and put it straight on top of it. I don't know whether you'll quite see it, it's just, just sort of dissipating as we see, but anything like that, it's a bit of a sign that something's there. So uh, yeah, going to get my rod straight on it. going to recast onto where I saw that fish flank, uh, flat spot earlier. It might be where it might have flanked because it's only little little tiny flat spots coming up and then they're dissipating very very quickly so I think it's fish flanking which does tend to happen quite a lot this time of year with the fish coming out of their winter slumber they're trying to get rid of all the um, uh, lice and things that are stuck to their bodies over the winter where they've been laid up quite often um, and you, they'll often find flanking spots, quite often clay spots uh, which they'll use to get try and get rid of the lice off of themselves. So yeah this time of year if you're seeing little little flat spots coming up quite often in my experience it can be a sign of fish flanking on the bottom. We just had a shower of rain and uh, it just stopped raining. I always know that's a good time to look for shows after rain. So we were having a bit of a look on uh, Elson, didn't see anything. Decided to have a look back, have a look on Mallard and we just seen one show about three quarters of the way up the pit. It's looking like it's going to rain again anytime soon, but I think we're going to make the move. We haven't seen anything on Elson's all day and I've been looking at Mallard less than Elson's obviously, but you know, to see one straight away after the rainstorm at the other end is, is it is a good sign, a good enough sign for me to get on the move. I think so. We're going to get wrapped up and get round there as quickly as possible.
Uh, we got round to the swim uh, in the middle of that massive rainstorm that we had uh, just as I was leaving the other, the other swim from the other lake. We'd, we'd seen the fish show from the other end of the lake up this way. Um, and what I've done, I've used the, where the wind line's showing on the water as a reference point as to where the fish showed, just to try and get in the rough area of where it was. Um, I just chucked out zigs and got straight under the brolly because it really was pretty horrendous and you don't want to be getting soaking wet in the middle of February. Um, but I've got under here and now the rain's just, just stopped now. I've, um, the water quality really is quite, quite murky up this end of the lake. So what I think I'm going to do, I think I've got a better chance on the bottom. So I'm going to switch over onto solid bags and uh, see if we can't nick one off the bottom. Quickly swapped over to a solid bag setup. Probably not the nicest, tidiest bag you'll ever see in life. It's not a, a part of angling I do that much, to be quite honest with you. But I'm certainly not going to be spoiling out anything like that today or throwing in. And in this, in this coloured water, I want a little bit of something around my hook bait to attract them. Um, it's made up some sweet liquid. Um, I put over some boily crumb that I did at home last night. I bought half a pint of maggots. I put a handful of pellet together, put them all together in a bucket just to take just for the um, crumb to take on the flavour of the sweet liquid overnight and there's plenty of smell and flavour there hopefully induces the bite. There's an area just down to my left here where there's actually two swims that have been closed off it comes around a bend it sort of acts as a little bit of an out of bounds area right tucked into this left um, the bailiff said to me on my, as he was walking around this morning that if I did go on this lake keep an eye on this area because it often holds carp or where we saw the carp show would have been about the same distance but a bit further out in the lake so i'm just going to spread my rods from this left hand side and come right right across to where i saw the show, fish show and hopefully i can pick one of the, something up on one of the rods When I was just putting that solid bag out at the corner of my eye, I'm sure I saw a fish show. So rather than faff about making another bag up, I had this rig ready to go. So I've just got that out of the bag, tied it straight on, quickly made up a mesh bag of uh, maggots and crumb. So that, put that on there and I'm going to get that straight on top of where I think I saw it show. That's all three rods back out there. Um, it's starting to brighten up a little bit out there, which is nice. Um, the sun's meant to come out this afternoon. We've got till five o'clock till we've got to be off. So um, hopefully we'll get a bit of a chance. Um, the great thing about Stanwick is it, all the lakes are, are very close together. There's six lakes in total, um, di differing um, degrees of hardness um, uh, throughout all of the different lakes. But the good thing is we've been so close, you can keep an eye on one lake while you're fishing another, which is exactly what we've done in this situation when we've seen the fish show. Um, so we've got ourselves around here. So, but Stanwick itself is steeped in history. It used to be Duncan Kay's Mid North Ants fishery. Um, and Elson's itself was the lake that did the British record before Mary back in late 80s, early 90s, I couldn't tell you the exact date, early 90s I believe. Um, so it's a place steeped in history. It's, it's just down the road from where I live. I haven't fished it a lot, I've only fished about six nights on Elson's, had four or five fish and this is only my second time on this lake ever. So I haven't done a lot of time but it's something yeah, Elson itself is a lake that I'm interested in joining possibly this winter. The fish have uh, shot wide up at, to sort of mid-40s. So, yeah, and all the lakes offer something different for, for every different type of angler, from, you know, coarse anglers catching single-figure carp wide up to specimen carp of over, over 40 pounds, like I say. So, yeah, it's, it's a hell of a, hell of a complex. Thank you. 
come to pretty much the end of the session and got five minutes before I've got to wind in and get out of here for the five o'clock deadline. Uh, fortunately, it's looking like it's going to be a blank. I haven't seen any more action or anything since, since those f fish earlier. Um, it was always going to be a tricky, um, you know, to catch one. The lake's been uh, shut now for over, over two months due to flooding all through the Neen Valley and then ice over for the last week and it only defrosted about 48 hours ago. So it's always going to be tricky, but it's just been nice to get a day out during this lockdown period. I think, you know, it's been difficult for us all, but hopefully we're nearing the end of it and we'll, we'll all be out on the bank soon, hopefully, and hopefully I'll see you there and catch some fish then. Until then, see ya.